So our brains are continually active, even when, when asleep. And all this takes an enormous amount of energy. If blood flow is cut off to the brain for a matter of seconds, these cells will die. Whereas if you cut off blood flow to a tensely contracting muscle, it will survive. It will survive for minutes, many minutes, half an hour without blood flow. But these cells are using much more energy every second of the day and night than our muscle cells uh, when they're contracting. When these impulses reach the end of the axon, they contact the next cell in line at the dendrites by these structures called synapses. And that's what many of us have studied uh, through much of our career. <clears throat> For every nerve cell, there may be up to a thousand synapses. So a hundred billion times a thousand is a lot of synapses. But I don't believe, I know no one here believes, that's where the complexity lies. The complexity of the nervous system, if we're going to deal with this, lies in how these synapses change as a function of the genetic instructions and as a function of experience, uh, listening, uh, life experiences, and they do change. And as many have pointed out, these synapses grow, they form, they retract. The brain is not hardwired. It is within limits. There is an architecture to the brain, but on the micron scale, there's it's a great plastic. deal of flexibility. <clears throat> One of the things that, that I think is very important to keep track of when you have something like this in front of you, we often think of the analogy of the brain as a computer. And in fact, the brain, of course, is an organ whose job is to process information. So it is a, it is a computing device. But the brain works the way it does because it's made of meat and not of silicon and copper. And so the fact that these axons transmit impulses at 100 miles an hour is not the same as a computer sending a signal at the speed of light. No. And the fact that each of these axons makes many variable contacts through chemical means with other cells is very different from connections to a transistor or a resistor or an electrical component. So we may use the computer to try and help us understand what the brain is doing, but John, among others, has talked a lot about the fact that the reason the brain works as it does is because it isn't made of silicon, it is well, made of it's a of specific meat. causal mechanism, and you ha we have to respect its specific biology, and for a long time the computer metaphor was really uh, uh, an impediment in cognitive science because it led people to the illusion that the anatomy doesn't really matter. All that matters is the programs, you get the right it's program, critical. and Absolutely I think I, for a whole lot of reasons that's a, a very unintelligent view and I think we're getting out of that view we have to and I, what I like about this particular group is we all respect the the anatomical biological specificity of the brain it's not an accidental organ you could, can't do it with just anything so what I'd like to hear Corey just say one word more word about is these cells are organized into circuits and and the circuits are very meaningful and those circuits are organized into larger ensembles so to go from a gene alteration to a circuit that can explain a simple behavior, I think is one of the, will be one of the great triumphs of neuroscience.